Now let's delve into the gastrointestinal system and drugs acting on GI system, right? So here is the regulation of acid secretion. You have proton pump and here is the lumen and proton pump is secreting acid into the lumen. Now acetylcholine via M3 receptors which are present everywhere I said. Now M3 receptors stimulates the acid secretion. It stimulates the proton pump. So if you want to decrease the acid secretion, give anti muscarinic like glycopyrrolate. You remember glycopyrrolate which was a derivative of quaternary amine structure and which cannot cross blood brain barrier, right? So anti muscarinic. Histamine also stimulates the acid secretion by activating proton pump. And if you want to decrease the uh, acid secretion, you give antihistaminics, right? And antihistaminic based on do they cross blood brain barrier or no are divided into first generation and second generation. First generation antihistaminic cross the blood brain barrier. So once they reach the brain, they produce sedating effect. So diphenhydramine, a Benadryl a cough syrup, which is available in cough syrup, diphenhydramine. So if your if your kid is disturbing you in the night when you are newly married, give him diphenhydramine. He'll sleep. Because first generation antihistaminic produce sedating effect. Please don't give for long time because it might cause CNS depression. So cyclizine is also one of the first generation antihistaminic and chlorpheniramine. All of these produce sedating effect. At the top, first generation antihistaminic also has anti muscarinic property. So they could also be used in motion sickness, right? On the contrast, second generation antihistaminic do not cross blood brain barrier, so they have no sedating effect and no motion sickness benefit, right? So, cetrizin, fixofenadine, and loratadine. Now, on contrast, prostaglandin decreases the acid production. So, if you give prostaglandin analog like mesoprostol, will help in decreasing the acid secretion now when you give NSAIDs what are NSAIDs these decreases the prostaglandin production right NSAIDs decreases the prostaglandin production so you'll have more acid so selective treatment for NSAID in induced ulcer is giving prostaglandin analog but remember this is selective treatment not treatment of choice the treatment of choice for NSAID induced ulcer is proton pump inhibitor like omeprazole because it, it inhibits every pathway. Alright. So the following doesn't cross blood brain barrier. Remember glycopyrrolate. So the following is not a second generation antihistaminic. These all are second generation which do not cross blood brain barrier and this is first generation. Exoprostol is prostaglandin even analog. So the following is useful in NSAID induced ulcer, PG even agonist like mesoprostol. Is the following is proton pump inhibitor that is omeprazole, rabeprazole, etc. A very basic question allopurinol is used in treatment of gout, especially chronic gout. What it does is inhibiting the xanthine oxidase, so there will be decreased production of uric acid. Remember, drug of choice for acute gout is NSAIDs, and for chronic gout, it's allopurinol. Anti TNF is not used in. Whenever you talk about the management of rheumatoid arthritis, the drug of choice for rheumatoid arthritis is methotrexate if there are no contraindications. And we monitor this disease every three months, right? And we look for the progress. If there is no progress and still the disease is active, we add the drugs. And one of the drug is anti TNF, the anti tumor necrotic factor, right? And the problem with anti TNF is. It cannot be used with diseases like TB or pneumonia or hepatitis B because it is thought to reactivate hepatitis B virus and so and so there'll be problem and also there are it can there are more chances to get opportunity infection like TB and pneumonia.